Okay, so I had to wake up. It is 3.33 uh, a.m. And uh, I had this dream and vision, spiritual encounter uh, moments moments earlier. But I needed to use the restroom um, and get my blankets and stuff. I uh, make myself look somewhat presentable. But um, in this vision and dream and spiritual encounter, <clears throat> I was in the living room with my little sister, Shakina. And we were sitting on a couch in a, in, in an apartment. Um, I believe it was a one-bedroom <clears throat> apartment. And I had on a pink t-shirt. I think it said Wachita Falls or something that was given to me by Cynthia Overa, Austin Metter's mother, after I gave birth to Melbourne. And Shakina and I, Shakina was on my left side, and I was <clears throat> sitting like in the middle of the sofa. And it was like a black leather couch or something, I think. But um, we were sitting on the sofa, and I was leaning back in the Wichita Falls t-shirt. And I was like, uh, Shakina, I want you to look at my stomach because it's moving my baby is moving i want you to see because uh people have been saying that <clears throat> i was not pregnant and she was right there and you could see it if you just looked i was very small um and it was uh i was kind of holding my belly like this and leaned it back and it was very small but if you just took the time to just look at it she would be able to see it moving and it was like she didn't want to look at it like she didn't want to look at it and she didn't want to see it moving and so um when I was saying just look I was like come on just look just really pay attention because she was like no she looked like she was like I don't like she was like she bar she didn't even really look she was like I don't see it you know I don't see it moving I don't see it and I was like yes you will I was like just focus on my stomach right here and you're gonna see it moving I'm very small but you're gonna see it moving and then she was like uh it's like she was about to try to look at it or I was like call her I was trying to convince her to look at it and then some men uh, came in the room in the living room there was a man who came in the living room and then like my older sister Larissa like she came in the living room and all of a sudden, it was like the man was next to me on one side, and then Larissa was next to me on one side. And I don't remember having on the Wachita Falls t-shirt anymore. That was a t-shirt I used to wear around the house with Melbourne, and I would wear it to the grocery store, like back when <clears throat> I was a stay-at-home mom, you know, um... And Cynthia had given me that shirt because she would go traveling out of town. And one day she came back and was like, oh, I, I got this, you know, Wichita Falls pink t-shirt for you while I was away. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I, I wore it all the time. But uh, I didn't have on this um, shirt anymore. And I don't recall exactly what I had on, but I don't know if, if it was dark clothing or what, but... What I do remember is that I had turned the recorder, the voice recorder on, on my phone, uh, to record the conversation that I was having with this man. And, uh, he was an older man and it was like, uh, he, I really don't want to go into detail. He looked kind of like Rich Dollars off of uh, Love and Hip Hop. But I don't remember a man uh, 
being around me that actually looks like him. Um, but in the dream, he looks like him. And uh, dreams are always symbolic. And visions and spiritual encounters are always symbolic. Remember Joseph and the dreams that he had in the Bible. So I'm going to continue. So um, next thing you know, you know, I was like recording the conversation because it was something treacherous about uh, this young man. Uh, and I was recording everybody, like, in the room, um, because people were denying, like, I had wanted to hide my pregnancy when the man came in the room. So, when my sister was right there, I was trying to show her, and I was trying to get in different positions to show her um, the baby moving. Um, like, yes, it is. Like, you know, let me lay like this, and you'll see, like, you can see it, like... And then all of a sudden, um, I, the man came in the room. And when he came in the room, I was hiding my pregnancy from him um, because I was so small. And I didn't want to be questioned. You know, I didn't want to feel any guilt about why I was so small. So um, I didn't want the man to know. But the man had started talking to me and he got all up on me like, oh, buddy, buddy. You know, like he um was like like he was trying to like uh get with get some from me, like you know, like have sex with me or but something didn't feel right about it, and I had turned my voice recorder on to record whatever <clears throat> he was saying to me and to record uh whatever was taking place with uh it really wasn't more emphasis on my sister but if to record whatever was being said, even with them or whoever was in the room. And then there was emphasis on other women uh, being involved and other men. Um, Yeah, other men being involved. But I don't I couldn't always see them, but they were there <clears throat> and they were involved. And so uh, next thing you know, like uh, I was trying to let it be known like I'm pregnant. And, um, they were like, I started like, uh, acting funny and then they pulled out their cell phones and then, um, the man showed me some pictures of myself and my sister Larissa showed me some pictures of myself and they were on two different occasions, I guess, occasions, I guess, because I had on different outfits and, um, I was looking at the pictures and I was like, I don't remember taking those pictures because there were, I was like, where did y'all like get those pictures? And they were like, <clears throat> we were partying, like, you know, you know, like we were having a good time and it was pictures of me, <clears throat> um, like with my back turned and looking back and like shaking my booty, like, you know, like in that position. Um, and I, I, I didn't recall those moments. Like, God be my witness. I did not recall in the dream. I, I didn't recall those, um, times, uh, where I was dancing and in, in that position. And, you know, there was like red, it was like a, I was in the bedroom door where one of the pictures and they had me from behind, like how you be popping like your butt and then you look back, you know, like that's kind of, but they had the picture of me from behind and I had my hair down or whatever and a little short mini skirt. And I was like, ah, uh, you know, like if the outfit might've looked familiar, like I didn't remember, um, that time of whatever we were, I was doing. And so, um, I didn't remember dancing in those positions or the pictures being taken. I didn't remember that. And so there was a red light in the bath in the bedroom and I was standing like in um the uh panel way of the doorway and then I was uh dancing but I had someone had taken picture of me like right there. And so um 
I was like, I didn't remember that. So this caused me to get uh, a little upset. And uh, I was like, I, I don't, when did you take those pictures of me? Like, and then I was asking my sister, Larissa, where did she get those pictures? Uh, no, I was saying I did not take those pictures. And so um, then I got up and I started looking at them and I turned towards them. And there was emphasis on that there had been different men um, involved with this. And so... Um, and that there were, uh, that, that, that my little sister, something about, uh, her, like there, I had in the dream, there was emphasis that, you know, she was the one saying that she didn't see my stomach moving. And then my older sister was showing me the pictures. So it was almost like, uh, my little sister was kind of involved with like showing me the pictures too, but my older sister had them. <clears throat> so... I was like, uh, let me walk up. Let me just get up. I like, I walked outside because, um, I had felt like, you know, let me go outside for a minute and just cool down. And so I walked out of the living room out of this apartment and I started walking down the sidewalk in the apartment complex and there were apartment buildings and it was very dark and no one was outside and there was emphasis on oh there was a leasing lady involved there was some leasing agent involved um and then that there was some police involved and that there was emphasis on the fact that the people in the house wanted me out there walking around outside in the night or no not necessarily that they wanted me to but that there was emphasis on the fact that someone could call the police on me while I was walking outside in the apartments um on the sidewalk um after leaving the apartment uh and trying to figure out what was going on and so I turned around and it was like uh <clears throat> it was like the Holy Spirit uh rose within me and I quickly turned around and I walked uh back into the living room and I and I told my sister I said send those pictures <clears throat> that you have of me in your phone to my phone send those pictures to my phone and then she was like okay or whatever <clears throat> and I, I was saying to the man send you know I was saying mostly to my sister send those pictures to my phone um and I, I was saying it in a very stern manner like um send those pictures to my phone like um and then um the man had got up and he uh, went into the bedroom and came out and, and he, he there was emphasis on the man leaving and coming back and disappearing and emphasis on me not being able to remember things that the man said and emphasis on me uh, like my, my, my mind being clouded when it comes to the male. Um, and when he came in the picture, I didn't remember things <clears throat> clearly. Um, and, and so this was the male that, uh, I was telling you about in the beginning that I started recording and who had pictures of me. Yes. So he, he went and was saying, um, he was like, <clears throat> you was on that powder because I had asked her to send me the pictures and, oh Jesus, get away from me. And, um, he was like, you was on that powder. And I was like, what powder? He was like, uh, uh, something about, um, like, oh, we got pictures of you doing powder. And I was like, what powder? I don't do powder. And he was like, yes, you do. You crushed up some pills and then you, you, you were sniffing them. And, um, I wrote, before I tell you the next part, I remember it was like everybody in the living room, um, uh, was conspiring 
to pay me out to look a certain way. And now I was kind of figuring it out, you know, and it was like they was trying to hurry up and find something to try to put on me. And so he was like, uh, yes, you do. Like, uh, you, you crushed up some pills and you were sniffing them. And I was like, I do not sniff pills. And I started getting loud. And it was like the Holy Spirit was doing it because, you mind you, when we're in these things, like, we don't really know. But it's like you, I could feel God in me. And God was like, I don't sniff pills. And I don't. So, I didn't know what the hell the man was talking about. And so, um, like, it, there was something about uh, him losing um, the bag of pills. And then, um, it was something like the Holy Spirit saying, I was drugged. And um, then it was almost as if everybody knew that I had been drugged. And that I just wasn't really aware, um, but that I knew kind of, but um, that I didn't really know um, exactly how I had been drugged in this vision. It was like a spiritual awakening. So it happened in the vision where I was like, it was like I was drugged and the reason why I was behaving the way that I was to where people could get where where they had those photos in their phones in this vision dream spiritual encounter was because someone had drugged me or the male had drugged me and then started getting pictures of me um after I had been drugged and then I was like, I don't, I was like, I don't, I don't take pills. I don't snort pills, you know, like, and they, then the man had lost, had was like, where my bag of pills at? Where my bag of pills at? Because at first everybody was acting like there was, like they had, like they had, had he was acting like he hadn't done anything. He was acting like, uh, he didn't drug me. Like he was trying to say that I was crazy um, and then, so, all of a sudden, he had lost his bag of pills, and then that's when he admitted that he did have pills, because he was trying to say that I had them, and I did not, and then, um, he, he, he found them, and, because he was, like, getting very angry, because he couldn't find them. And then he had a really big bag of pills. And they were like blue or whatever. Like they looked like ecstasy or a date rape drug. And then he was like, where are my pills at? Where are my pills at? And then uh, he found them. Um, I, like in the bedroom or something, he found them. And that's when I saw um, the bag of pills. And they looked like ecstasy and it was like significance on the fact that they could be crushed and put in someone's drink. Um, and that it could become, that it could be used as a day rape drug where the woman would not really remember things that happened. Like uh, where you could be involved in some activities and then not remember what took place. Um, I do know a little detail about interpretation and symbolism and, um, I can definitely do that, but I want to do an entire video, uh, comprised of what all of this means and, uh, what a lot of this is symbolic for, what I remember, because there are certain instances that I do remember about certain men and my relationship with my sisters in this and you know uh, the different parts that a lot of different people played in this and I know that the Holy Spirit is allowing me to reveal it um, because there were certain things I was afraid to say 
because I didn't want the people getting angry at me who are aware of what's going on and who have been involved with uh, harming me. And um, I know that I have been drugged. Um, I know that I have uh, felt that men were drugging me in their homes. Um, you know, there were times when I would drink the drink and know that there was something wrong with it um, <clears throat> or something wrong with the food. There uh, was times that I did tell my sister, you know, that I was pregnant and I had her feel my belly and she was, you know, it seemed like she was pretending like she couldn't feel it. Uh, but it was more so the fact that when I was in the men's home in reality and I was showing my belly moving, then all of a sudden they started acting really frantic and trying to get me out of the house and trying to starve me and you know uh it was a lot so it for me to go into the interpretation of what all of this is symbolic for because remember it's just a dream it's just a vision these are just spiritual encounters there is great emphasis on things that actually really took place and people who actually do know about um my situation but you know, there are a lot of things are symbolic and a lot of things, you know, the Holy Spirit is actually giving me clarity about as well. So um, I have to comprise a video to uh, let you guys know the facts and the details because the Holy Spirit has given me the okay to be able to go ahead and tell you about the people who know what's going on and the people that were involved, you know, um, <clears throat> with this. So, um, remember in my visions and my dreams and my spiritual encounters, this is not my open statement to say that, uh, this is what actually happened or these people are actually involved. I'm telling you what the dream was and, I'm going to comprise a video of the interpretation and the interpretation is going to tell you who was actually involved and what that part was symbolic for. And it's going to be my open statement about what's going on. So, yeah, that's going to be fact and that's going to be um, reported, you know, um, worldwide because um at this point, um, I know that it's, it's a worldwide investigation. It's a worldwide um, case because I openly share my content with the world. And um, we need help from anywhere in the world. Um, and people need to understand the clarity of what my visions and dreams and spiritual encounters mean. But some people can read into it already. And it's also giving me clarity to know that um, I know what's going on, that uh, I'm not crazy, um, that I need to come forward with the information about whoever was involved, but to do it as in a way that the Holy Spirit wants me to do it. Because it's so easy to just come out, oh, this person knew, oh, this person did this, oh, this person did that. And it, it will cause us to feel like we're constantly accusing people and blaming people for our situation. But when God knows what's going on and he wants you to speak out and he wants you to reveal it and he's giving you a platform to do it. And he's giving you a blueprint on how to do it. And he wants you to go back and look at what this is symbolic for and he wants you to tell how well how was this person involved you know you had this dream and you know what was going on now tell exactly how this happened and tell exactly the leasing lady that you remember and tell the conversation you had with your sister and uh tell about you know the different guys whose houses you've been in who drugged you you know and who do you remember had pictures of you in their phone when you were naked and you don't remember those pictures being taken? You know, so it's symbolism, you know, um, and I do know what's going on. And I do know, I do remember who, who drugged me, 
Um, it was not rich dollars. <laughs> but, you know, that was just how the man came to me in the dream. But I remember who it was, and I wasn't comfortable coming out and uh, saying that I, that he drugged me or that certain people drugged me because... Um, Because I was afraid. I was afraid, you know. Um, and then I wasn't sure necessarily. Uh, I didn't remember how could you get a picture of me that I don't know of. And I believe God was showing me that it has happened several times. Um, the part about my sister being involved. Uh, I don't necessarily know if my sister having pictures of me in her phone but I do know that she is aware of what's going on and I can go into detail about when I told her and her reaction and how she has not been there for me um, or how she has been there for me and her involvement of the interactions that I've had with her throughout this. Um, and I just believe God wants me to um, show emphasis on certain people who are aware of my situation and uh, whether they are my family members or whatever and certain people who were involved with me um, and who I felt drugged me and this is something that you have I have to take my time to do because um, there are several different visions dreams spiritual encounters that I have to interpret to kind of get the facts out there about what's been going on and I know that God has led me to do it and to not be afraid of them um and to not feel ashamed uh of any family members that uh didn't help me and that know about this so whether they believe me or not because my sister was behaving as if she didn't believe me um, so I think God wants me to just talk about uh, what happened when I told her. Um, and I'll go into more detail about it because I need to go lay down. Um, I just wanted to just get that out there and, you know, say that I, I'm going to interpret all of this. Um, to, to let y'all know what took place in reality and what everything was symbolic for. Because remember, you know, in the Bible, you know, Jesus spoke in parables and um in visions that a lot of people had a lot of it was very symbolic and there were times when God spoke straight out about uh what needed to be said and then there was a lot of symbolism and a lot of other visions and dreams and uh Joseph was able to interpret and there were people in the Bible who was able to interpret and I'm able to interpret and I know exactly what a lot of it means and it is the Holy Spirit causing me to speak out and tell what's going on. And also to have been blessed to tell you guys the visions and the uh, spiritual encounters and dreams. Because when I do interpret it for you, you will understand um, what they meant. And that I'm telling the truth. Alright, so God bless you all. Good night.